Did you know that every person that comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ as personal and Lord and Savior is put to work? Let me show you from the scriptures, if you would, this morning. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5, I want to look at a little story here. Uh, and many of you may remember it, but I'd like for us to take a look at it again for a moment, if you would indulge me. Chapter 5, the book of Luke. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genereset, and that is simply the Sea of Galilee, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. So this is pretty self-explanatory scriptures here. Uh, we see that the crowd of people have become too many for Jesus to uh, adequately speak to. And if you've noticed, when you're on a body of water, your voice carries much louder, much stronger. And so Jesus saw two ships standing by the lake or, or docked there at the lake, and no one was in the ships. They were out washing and mending their nets. And they do this after each time they go out to fish, the nets would get torn. There would be things that they would need to get ready for their next fishing trip. And verse 3 says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him, or asked him very nicely, that he would thrust out a little from the land. Uh, Simon did this, or Peter, uh, later on we will see. Uh, he did this, and it said, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, I want you to picture this story, if you would visualize uh, Jesus talking to multitudes of people. Devils had come out of people. Uh, people had been clean. Eyes had been open to those who were blind. And Jesus had talked talk to those in the synagogue and declared his ministry to have begun here upon earth, he being the Son of the Most High God. And now in verse 4, as we move into it, as I say, these verses are pretty self-explanatory. Jesus talking to the multitudes of people, and they had followed him now to the Sea of Galilee, wanting to hear more. And my friends, there's a lot of people out there today seeking to hear more. And I want to ask you this question, what are you doing to help reach these people? When Christ called Peter, he called him into service. You see what the first thing he told him to do? Peter, those nets are not what is important. Peter, your fishing is not what is important. What is important, Peter, come and learn a lesson, and I'll show you. Now, in verse 4, he says, Now, when he had left speaking, or when he had finished speaking to the crowds that were upon the bank, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And what he's simply saying there is push out a little bit, let your nets down, and you're going to catch a multitude of fish. Now, I want you to look at these verses preceding verse 4. Jesus always repays you and I for the work that we do for him. It may come through many fashions. It may come through monetary gain. It may come through uh, health. It may come through the opportunity to preach for him. It may come through the opportunity of holding revivals for him. And I'm speaking of myself here. Uh, and so anytime we stop what we're doing and we put Christ first, expect a blessing in your life. And this is what he told Peter. He, now that he's finished speaking with the multitudes, he tells Peter, he said, I want you to go and let your nets down over the side. Now I want you to look at Peter's response. And Simon answering said unto him, Master we have toiled all night. Now, when he calls him master here, that's simply teacher or rabbi. Uh, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. 
Now, my friends, there's times in my life and your life that we attempt to do things and uh, we just come up empty handed. And here Simon was with those that were on his boat. Uh, they had worked all night long fishing, setting out the nets, drawing in the nets, setting out the nets, drawing in the nets, everything that they could possibly do to catch fish, and they had caught nothing. My friend, there's times in my life I know that I try and I struggle to get something done, and it just does not come together. And the reason I have found that it doesn't come together is those times that I struggle, those times that it just doesn't seem to be working, is those times that I'm trying to do it all by myself and not including Jesus Christ, not obeying his word when, when he tells me to seek him for advice and for guidance. Now, I want you to look at what Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. My friend, you and I have to come to a point in our lives as Christians where we believe and we trust and we have faith in our Savior. Isn't it ironic that most people have no problem uh, letting Jesus be in control of their soul after death, but they just really don't want him helping out here in their life on earth. They certainly don't want him to take control of their money or their finances, uh, they feel they can do a better job at that themselves. Now, let me tell you, Peter was a very good fisherman. He did this for a living. He had a partnership. He had a business going on. And my friend, we know in any business, it has to be profitable or you don't stay in it. And so here Peter was very profitable in his business and had worked all night long and had received nothing. But Peter simply said these words, at thy word, I will let down a net. And so uh, here Peter says in verse six, look at what look at what Luke gives as an account of what happened when Peter began to obey Jesus Christ. And when they had thus done, when they let down the, great, the nets, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. My friends, some of those fish escaped. Some of them were caught, but there were so many fish in those nets that the nets began to break. Now listen, Jesus talks to us about tithing. Uh, right before he was silent for 400 years upon this earth and sent no prophets. Uh, one of the things that he says is that we have robbed him in tithes and offerings. We've not given to the ministry. We've not helped get out the word. My friend, I, I, you know, I do everything I can on this end to help you. I'll send you free literature. I'll send you free tracks, not asking for your money. Uh, if the Lord lays up on your heart to send a donation, that's wonderful. But if he doesn't, I still want to send you these tracks because I want you to be a worker for Jesus Christ. Ask yourself this question. How long has it been or have you ever led someone to Jesus Christ. Do you know that that is your job to do? Jesus is teaching Peter a great lesson here. He's teaching Peter that Peter can't do it by himself. But if he obeys Jesus and takes Jesus at his word, then his life is going to turn around greatly. Now look at verse 7. After the nets begin to break, look at verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners. See, I told you that, that they had a partnership, they had a business, which were in the other ship. They had these ships there docked. They were cleaning it out. They had been there all night. That they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. As I started to say a minute ago, right before God was silent with this earth for 400 years, he talked to man about 
their tithe about their money. He said, what, will a man rob God? Will you walk by the offering plate at your church and reach in and take out a handful of money and put it in your pocket? You say, no, preacher, I would never do that. Do you know when you don't give the 10% that the Lord requires and then an offering up on top of that? You see, that 10% is already his. When you give him your tithe, you have given him absolutely nothing. That already belongs to him. But it's your offering that brings the blessings back into your life. And here they offered their ships. They offered their nets. They offered their ability. My friends, there is something in your life today that you can offer Jesus Christ. You may not be able to offer financially, but you can pass out tracts when you're out. You can give a tract to the lady at the grocery store, the person at the drive-in restaurant, those you meet in doctor's offices while you wait. My friend, it's just a wonderful way to get out the gospel, and it's absolutely free to you. And it seems that so many people have fallen into that great falling away, that they're not interested in doing anything for Jesus Christ. I want you to look at what Simon said in verse 8. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You know what? Peter had the right idea right then. When he saw that Jesus, his eyes were opened, and he saw Jesus for who he was, he said, I am a sinful man. And my friend, you and I need to take a look at ourselves and take a look at Jesus and see how we stack up. I encourage you not to stack yourself up with your pastor. You may be let down. Don't stack yourself up against me and, and measure yourself against me, for I may let you down. But my friend, I ask you to put yourself up against Jesus and see how you measure up to what Jesus wants you to be. Verse 9, it says, For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the, the, the amount of fish which they had taken. Verse 10, and it says, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Verse 11, And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. They laid everything aside that they thought was so important. And my friend, Jesus is not asking you to lay aside your job, quit work, and go out and hand out tracts. He's simply asking you to take what you have now, which is, in this case, the boats. He asks for you to take what you have now and invest it into the ministry. My friend, the stock market may crash. It's been going up and up and up, and that old saying, what goes up, you got the rest of it. It's going to come down. And my friend, whatever you invest in Jesus Christ will never come down. It will always be there, multiplied several times over and sent back to you. Are you having problems in your life today? Are you having a situation in your life today that things look bleak? It looked bleak for these fishermen who had been out there all night. My friend, even then, they had expenses, new nets, new hooks, payroll. Uh, they had to pay taxes. Uh, they had expenses back then. If the sales got torn, they had to be replaced. Well, my friend, you know, they still gave their all to Jesus Christ. What they gave was their all. They're saying this business is not important. The nets is not important. What is important is Jesus Christ. And you know, these disciples that followed him that, ne that day never had a need for anything else in their life. They followed Jesus, and Jesus provided. I'm asking you today to follow Jesus. I want to send you 25 free tracks that you can pass out to those around you. I challenge you today to take these tracks and get them into the hands of those that are lost. We ask absolutely nothing except you get them into the hands of those that need them. And should the Lord lay upon your heart to help with this ministry, it'll be greatly appreciated. But whatever, lay it aside for Jesus. Pick up your cross and follow him.